Barbara, thank you. And I want to go to Republican Congressman Will Hurd of Texas. Um, obviously, he's a congressman, he's on the committee here, but also former undercover CIA agent who was stationed in Afghanistan. Uh, so you understand this in a way that, that pretty much no one else does. Um, and you now have heard Barbara's reporting. Um, it was in the presidential daily brief. Uh, he may not have been audibly briefed about it, but it was there for, for him to, to read. What is your response? Well, I, I think your reporter had it right. Why wasn't it escalated to an in-person brief versus just a physical document? And now, I, I can't confirm or, or, or deny whether it was in the PDB, but this would be um, information that should get escalated uh, to the senior levels of, of government. And, they, and, and even if there was some kind of question about intelligence like something like this, then you would still you know, put caveats uh, around the information, and and why is is you know uh, the Russians paying for scalps right and and doing these bounty hunting? Why is this an, an issue? Why does this, this matter? It would show an escalation of Russian activity in Afghanistan. Um, you know we we know they've been in Afghanistan. We know they're supporting the the Pakistanis. We know they're supporting groups uh, like um, you know th some of the other the groups operating in in Afghanistan in in Pakistan. Um, but you, you know when you're 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 usually fighting for a policy objective in these places. Um, but when your only goal is to kill Americans, that's a completely different thing. That's not what a nation state does. That's what a thug does. And, and the Russians are thugs. And I don't have to, you know, this doesn't change my opinions of them. They are not our allies. They are our adversaries. And we should be doing everything to stop them. And this is important at the timing of, you know, this kind of yeah. information is why we're trying to negotiate a, a peace process. And can you trust a peace process or people are supposed to be involved in supporting the peace process if you know that this type of stuff is happening. And guess what? The Russians have done this kind of stuff before. Well, we know all the cases of what they've tried to do in, in Europe. But, but unfortunately, what's happening right now is that the, the Russians are winning because now we're continuing to sow mistrust and, and the lack of trust in all of our institutions and the questions around this. And, and unfortunately, Aaron, yeah. I have more questions than I have answers to, to some of your questions, uh, but this is something. And, and, and when did the oversight committees uh, know of, of potential information and did they have access to this type of information? These are valid questions because the o that's why you have civilian oversight to make sure right. that you're, you're well, asking questions. Well, so when I, I hear your frustration, right, on a lot of levels, you've just explained things that a lot of people didn't understand, I think, which is why the Russians doing this would be an escalation and would be different and would be very significant from what they were doing in Afghanistan prior to that. But, 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 but the outrage that you have is very different than the president's, right? He, he says he wasn't briefed and he's made this about that. Now, again, if it's in the presidential daily briefing, I'm just going to say, in my, my view, if it's handed to you and you choose not to read it, that's still on you. I understand he, he did not get verbally briefed. But his response to this is, Intel just reported to me that they did not find this info credible, therefore did not report it to me or at VP, possibly another fabricated Russia hoax, maybe by the fake news New York Times wanting to make Republicans look bad. Uh, but as we now know, they had meetings, they talked about sanctions, they talked about reprisal. Um, what do you what do you say to that? That that his response sure. isn't. I want to know what the heck happened. I want to know why I wasn't briefed, and I want to do something about it. But instead, was to be yelling about fabricated hoaxes and fake news. And, and again, I'm not going to confirm or deny, you know, an, an intelligence. Right. But if something this sensitive uh, was out there, I'd be pissed that nobody uh, brought it to me or, or right. didn't raise their hand and be like, "Hey, boss, uh, read in that. You know, there's some information you need to read today. Make sure." We, we cut out time in your, in your calendar in order to do that. So that would be the question that I would be asking. And then if there was some kind of conflict in the veracity of the information, what are we doing to clarify that? What are we right. doing to understand this? What other things would we possibly know if this information, if we had access to this kinds of information? Oh, and by the way, are we telling our allies uh, because, you know, we can't do this alone and we've had some amazing allies. And even if you had this type of information and you had some questions on its veracity, you would still overshare. It doesn't hurt to overshare in, 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 in this case uh, to make sure that if indeed something like this was true, you would be able to protect yourself. So these are the 
kinds of, of questions we should be asking to make sure that our men and women that are serving in order to make sure that we don't have Al Qaeda coming back, that we don't have ISIS plotting and planning you know, threats on our homeland, why this is important in order to bring stability um, to Afghanistan. In the middle of a, an alleged peace process, um, these yeah. are these are some of the questions that we should be getting we should be getting answers to, and it shouldn't take months to try to figure out answers to those questions if the there there is months gone by between collecting this information and having debates around this. Right, it's true because we understand uh, that the, it was in the presidential daily briefing uh, this spring, which I know does leave a broad time frame here, but 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 in the spring. All right, thank you very much, Congressman. I always appreciate your time. Thank you. Aaron, and I just want to say thanks for your last segment um, with that young gentleman. I'm talking about the family uh, of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I lost I lost a loved one um, to this, a family member, and it's serious. And, and that 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 mm -hmm. segment should be replayed over and over. So thanks for that. Well, I'm really sorry for your loss. I am. It has Thank uh, you. touched so many. Thank you.